there and welcome to another episode of the Stella Sound Podcast, the only podcast relatively unknown to Earthlings but rocking it on all the interdimension space traveling radars to empower creative musicians everywhere. I'm your host, Leandre Paulson, and today I'm joined by Dean K.R. But first, to become part of our interstellar presence, find us at the Stella Sound Podcast on all our social platforms at Stella Sound Podcast or join our astronauts in the Stella Sound Discord community. Links are in the description. Dean is an Israeli-based bassist that specializes in sound engineering design. From recording the Israeli COVID protest to extracting the perfect monster gurgles from voice actors, Dean's wealth of knowledge concerning all things sound is unlimited. Dean, welcome to the Stella Megiddon, and how are you today? I'm good. It was an impressive introduction. Thank you. Now, I'm getting better and better at this. I think the first one, I was like, blah, 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 and now I'm like nailing it. You're like nailing it. You just like wrapped it. I did, not, I, I did not practice that at all right before you got on the screen. I just winged it. Didn't do any exercises. <laughs> didn't do my me, me, me. So my blah, blah, blah. You practiced the whole it's just, like a it's finger. Just, it's just a natural talent, you know. You're <laughs> natural. You know, I should record you sometimes for some voice acting. I so you're a natural, you know. I'm, like I'll am i I'll send you my number after this, and then you could just phone me, and I'll be there. And I'll, it's go to Israel. I'll be there in a heartbeat, I tell you. Oh. Uh, um, we'll do that. Okay. We'll do that. I'm going to, like, just jump into my questions. And the first yeah. question that I have for you is quite silly, actually. If... If, if we two musicians, and I'm going to ask you this, you'll probably throw me with something and be like, you idiot. But I always like to believe that people that are outside the music sphere or music world or don't have anything to do music related in their life, they're kind of like the muggles in Harry Potter where they know nothing about magic. And then when you show them something magic, they're like, what? basically. So when I tell people that you're a sound engineer or a sound designer, producer, they're like, aren't those like the exact same three things? And then you're like, no, <laughs> no, nope, not at all. So <laughs> yeah, nope, not at all. Exactly. So I want you in the most simplistic forms possible try and describe to us exactly what the hell do you do <laughs> all right this is how i explain it every time because people confuse engineering designing and music composition so let's do yeah. it like basic let's say let's say you watch a movie and you there's music right you hear the music you know someone composed the music there's a composer for it Besides yeah. the music element, there's everything else you hear. You hear dialogues, you hear the ambience, like, you know, the forest uh, birds or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, you hear all the effects in the Avengers. Someone should make those effects. This is where yeah. I, as a designer, come in. So this is what sound designing is doing, and there's, like, the musicians. Audio engineering is a bit more technical, more studio-oriented. Now, again, it's a bit vague, but when I wasn't, like, sound engineer... I consider myself more when I worked in like studios, like, you know, plugging and unplugging stuff, setting the microphones for singers, um, tuning the mixer when we recorded drums or stuff like that. So this is where I set the boundaries between the fields. Yeah. I mean, that's very interesting. I think that uh, th that is probably the basic uh, way to describe it. Because like I said, most most non-musicians think it is the exact same thing and they're like no let's take it's exactly what you said a, a movie a film the avengers perfect example there's yeah. obviously that epic that epic um end credit song oh, which i can't remember the name now from the top of my head but and then you also have just like the the sounds of let's say the fists hitting the face yeah or like the whole everyone remembers the music eventually no one cares about like mm -hmm. i'm sorry but no one cares about the sound designer you will never see like you know in the beginning credits Ex like sound design by sound designer it, it just sound supervisor and let's say this music by whatever it's yeah. always just that but i'm gonna fight you on that because i think the most um well-known sound effect that should have ever existed to date is probably the lightsabers on the that side, which I it's, can't it's do a properly. classic one also. It's like, yeah, it's like, like and then, sound design and it sticks. And, and it that's sticks. probably, that's a, that, that I, when people say what sound engineering, what sound is, I'm like that, 
that right there that what didn't really happen magically when the light came on that's a sound design that was created by a person somewhere in a studio um, ben i yeah, don't remember so... his name ben something but the way he created uh, that if i remember correctly there are probably gonna be some pissed off sound designers out there he just took a <laughs> microphone and he just created feedbacks with a speaker and he like he just distorted it a bit and whenever he moved no. the microphone it's like zoom, zoom, zoom. no so really? it's just feedbacks distorted and that's a lightsaber that's a bit like that what <laughs> that's it that's, it. Honestly, that's how you create honest. the sound like it, it's it's like uh it's funny how simple it's sometimes let's take the star wars yeah there's like laser yeah. guns and stuff like that it's just like yeah. you know slinkies just like you know stretch and you just like like hit them and it's do like that oh. and just do that noise i don't know why it oh, just makes just that like... noise <laughs> That's amazing. I don't know. I, I watched like the behind the scenes ones of sound, sound design. And I want to say it was like basically it's really, really gore and brutal, but it was someone's head getting chopped off or like a limb getting chopped off in the movie. And all the sound design in it was like chopped lettuce. Um, like a, a or a piece of cabbage or something. Yeah. Classic. And then they just, they just stole the celery is really good. Like... Bell pepper. Oh, amazing. amazing. For skulls breaking. <laughs> it oh. just works good. Never... It has the hollow element, was... you know, it's like the, oh, it's just a bit sounds hollow. So like, like bell peppers are perfect <laughs> for skulls. <laughs> That's, That's really That's so you know, if you want to ever create a skull I'm breaking. I'm never going <laughs> to, I'm going to be like cutting up bell peppers that I'm like, oh, oh. Yeah, it's like, how it sounds, it's terrible. <laughs> but that's, that's a, interesting if the, that's fine. But then you go into, let's say, a recording voice actors and obviously you're sitting behind behind this microphone mm -hmm. kind of coaching your voice actors through it and there's um a really great uh one of your instagram videos i think i might show it later um where you got one of your voice actors just to laugh a bunch of times um until i think he was probably blue in the face his voice sounded a bit hoarse at the end but there was like um, they say a million takes of the same laugh so how do you know when ah. you've got the right laugh or the right monster gurgle or the right i want to say sound from your voice actually when do you know you've got got the one that's the one yeah. wow it's it it differs by the way that guy is oren he's a really like really close friend he's from safek he's yeah. like and he has oh, um, he can do bad, amazing yeah. sounds with his mouth uh <laughs> <laughs> and first of all i mostly when i listen to it i don't hear the voice actor just you know, speak. I mostly hear it after it's processed, like in the end result, if mm. it's like reverb or delayed okay. or pitched down and has the whole like effect chain on it. I can really hear the end result and then laugh that my sound a bit generic just worked perfectly. And mostly on the technical level, like the most basic level, I just take a lot of takes just to know I'm safe in mm. case my client or I just want to change something. So I will have a lot of like takes okay. eventually. Uh, and then I just like go through them. I just listen to them. I'm like, I love those, those three. I'll take this one, this one. And I just listen to it and whatever kicks me, it's like moving it on the, in the yeah. DAW <laughs> and whatever I give yeah. me the kick, you know, what's like, you know, mm, sounded right. I just like take it. Like, it's really just a hunch, you know, like it's going to be a thousand laughs, but there's like those, this one laugh It's like, this one could be a classic. Like I'm going to take that one. Question was you do score for videos and you do sound design for videos and everything. Um, when directors bring you these videos, what is your process when starting to write something for it? So just to begin with, quite quickly, I understood there's going to be a lot of frustration in this process. So I, I just like, before I even go down to compose stuff, to do whatever, I just watch the movie. I just absorb it or the scene or the shot or whatever. And I just yeah have a talk, like meeting with the director. And I'm saying like this, like, Here's a reference from a movie I liked. Here's a reference from another movie I liked. I think it's a total different direction. Here's another reference. I think it's amazing. And I also just asked the director, yeah. give me our like references, you know, give me like three different directions. One is like, you know, jazzy, yeah. one is classy, like whatever you think can fit. It doesn't have to be the same kind of like reference, mm -hmm. whatever you think fits, mm -hmm. give it to me. And also give me three references of stuff you, you don't want to hear. Like there's no way. You want to hear it like in the video on that shot, like I'll know what to stand yeah. away from. <laughs> and where I come okay. in as a composer, 
or a sound designer, but mainly a composer in that situation, is to understand what he liked in each reference. It's like, okay, it's not necessarily about the chord progression. It's not necessarily about the genre. It's more about he just really liked the flute because I see there's like a flute melody in every reference or something. Okay. He's looking for that soft timbre of a flute, for example. So I know to do that. Okay. Like if he gives me like a bad example, I'm like, I'm just hearing guitars. I'm like, no guitars, <laughs> no doubt about it. And then I just like compose, no you know, just draft. <laughs> And mostly after okay. this, like, you know, this process, they'll be like, cool. And like, I just don't write the whole composition, just like a bit of a draft. Hey, why do you say? Send him like a different draft. Hey, what do you say about that? And then he just directs yeah. me and we go to the same, we get to the same result that we're both looking for. Or, yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> or, <laughs> after a lot of frustration sometimes, mostly in short animations or commercials or like short videos or like, or short movies, I'm like, Look, having me composing your music is going to be expensive. It's going to take time. There's like a million of amazing compositions out there in all those like sound libraries and like music libraries. Yeah. Let's pick yeah. one. Like the, you want Hans Zimmer? You don't need me. Let's pick a Hans Zimmer composition. Someone composed something like Hans Zimmer. Yeah. It sounds amazing. Let's have that. It's going to be this quick. Feel- it's going to cost you like $50, the worst case. And mostly they're happy, mm. to be honest. And like there's amazing... So- they they go for it. Yeah, like, it's, okay, it's an amazing it's cool. solution for everyone. It saves me time and frustration so... of like, oh, I like this composition so much. And then the director will be like, I don't like it. And I'll be like, oh, but it's my, like my art. I just tell them, let's go there. It's, it's like going to save everyone money and like frustration. <laughs> and the people who compose for the libraries are good composers. Like there's been amazing yeah, compositions there with really talented people. A lot of musicians I follow today are musicians of just saw like in art list library, if you know art list. Yeah. They're amazing. They're like yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone's happy. I think one of us. Uh, so, eventually. Yeah, yeah. That's in. That's so interesting. I never thought that, I want to say, a company would take that. Uh, uh, let's say small companies might take that approach. But I don't think a, a company would take that approach. Like, but then again, uh, uh, except for that, uh, the it's interesting how you say the whole process of what you do with uh, how you give the director options and you have options and you take from what the, you know, all the, all those steps that you take is quite interesting because I think most people think you just sit down and write a theme and then bam, it's in the, in it's, it's orchestra orchestrated, sorry. And it's in the movie. I don't think a lot of people know what administration is attached to it. It's not just writing music. There's actually just more, wheeling and dealing and then music writing yeah um, yeah, yeah yeah it's a lot of searching it's, and exploring to be honest it's searching and researching as well i think that you keep mentioning hans zimmer which is a obviously a, a great example for all schools of composition I'm but pissed he about talks him, a lot way. about Sorry. Be... <laughs> why <laughs> everybody wants hans Wait, zimmer now. everybody wants a hans zimmer theme oh. in their movie i'm like come on guys come on like tons of genres. I was really offended. <laughs> I was so offended for like five seconds. Like you don't like. He's Hans amazing, Zimmer. but everyone. I'm, I'm not Hans Zimmer. I'm not. I do different <laughs> stuff. I'm really good at other stuff, but I'm not Hans Zimmer. I tried. I failed. Everyone wants it. Everyone wants to be. Uh, wants a little bit of Hans Zimmer in the movie. It's true, but that's because he set the bar. But then again, no. Uh, yeah, there's one Hans Zimmer. Yeah. And unfortunately, fortunately. Um, but yeah, it's 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 difficult because he does the same thing that you did. Uh, you do. He, I think it was. Oh, I'm gonna be wrong, so wrong again. But I think it was like a Vogue article, YouTube video thing that Vogue does, or I want to say, like they'd say, it's some fashion magazine. Who okay. cares? <laughs> the point is, that that he was breaking down his best songs of the last decade or something of his career or something like that, and he kept saying, "Yeah, okay, we did this, and the director didn't like that, so we just changed everything." Or I think it was, I, I want to say it was his uh, um, work with Interstellar, which was um, very strong on the organ yeah. music, um, and he wrote something else that had very a lot of synth wave in it. And the director was like, no, I don't like this, but I like the, like, the pipiness, the church feel. And then Hans was like, okay, we're bringing in a pipe organ. Better go for that. And I mean, that thing. (laughs) And then 
that, I mean, Interstellar's soundtrack is it's amazing. so it's beautiful. well known now. That's amazing. Yeah, so I think that, that's a it's a very uh, I want to say collaborative process between director and and composer essentially. What's your favorite um, or let's say most interesting project that you've ever worked on? Composing, engineering, design doesn't matter which section of it. Which one's the most interesting one? No doubt about it, the Nick Watch. It's like it was the most exciting, yeah, fulfilling, uh, artistic, fun. Yeah. I just I have only good words to say about it. Besides, it's ended for now. Like it was yeah. amazing. I'll just explain what the Nick Watch is because it sounds. Yeah. What the hell is the Nick Watch? Uh, yeah. so I was approached by a company, like someone connected us, if I'm not mistaken, from a company in Israel who made uh, the Nick watch, which is a smart watch for kids and yeah. it's Nickelodeon themed. Like it's a product yeah. by Paramount and Nickelodeon and the whole theme is Nickelodeon franchises like Loud House and SpongeBob and the Ninja Turtles and it's stuff we grew Everything, up on. Yeah. And we just, the whole, the whole, uh, idea of the Nick watch was to get a smartwatch for kids that they can like contact with their parents, but also give them some games. And one of the main rules were no screen, like, uh, like nothing to deal with the screen, you know, like, like, you know, touching and tapping, just like music and vibration, like, uh, no vibration. How do you say that yeah. word? I'm just having a blackout of that word. <laughs> Never mind. Like, it just the game yeah, supposed to work on like on musical sound design vibrations and all kind of like you know inputs the player gets, okay, and we just okay. created sixteen games and five different modules for the kids to play, oh. and we That's tested it on kids and just watching kids play, and like understanding game mechanics and game rules just by sound and music and see them dancing, or adjusting themselves to the game rules or inputs they get was just an amazing thing to see. And the most amazing Imagine. part of it, it was Nickelodeon like themed. And I grew up on that. So yeah, that's like part of your childhood. Th th there was a whole variety of music that can be just silly, just silly kid music, just like blah, 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 <laughs> music to all yeah. like, you know, country music. I can put rock inside. I could put dance. I can put like electronic. I can put jazz. You could I can just do whatever I want your... Yeah. And the but sound that for a creator is amazing. And, for and a the creator, thing, that's, that's like awesome. The... Sorry. As ever a creator, that's just awesome, completely awesome, because you can do whatever it's, you want, exactly we said. It, it was really fulfilling. And also the sounds were just like silly, you know, it's just like, again, the Nickelodeon franchise. So it's like it can go from just like, you know, cartoonish sound to fart sounds or slime sounds, which is just <laughs> so fulfilling to yeah. do the stuff like just just sound, you know, and the yeah. kids laugh <laughs> and you see them laugh yeah. and you see them having fun. and. It, the whole process, like with the studio, it's called Ramon Studio. The whole team there was amazing. The developers, the artists, uh, the producers, everyone was just amazing to work with. It was just like an experience. We all explored how we can make this smartwatch fun for kids using music, using effects, using colors, using vibrations. It was just like an amazing experience. Uh, That's really cool. Yeah, it, it was yeah. no doubt the most exciting project I worked on. <laughs> You'll want to do it again someday. Someday. It's gonna be phase similar. two. I hope so. I hope. Oh, so. really? Okay, that's exciting. So. That's you exciting. know, nothing is yeah. like settled in it's like till it's actually happening. So I don't wanna, you know, just say stuff. Okay, but Dean. Yeah. Um, as is the stalker-based tradition here at Salasan Podcast, mm -hmm. I have gone through your social media pages and I have tried and clipped the most interesting ones. Um. So I am going to try and screen share, which is always an epic fail on my okay. part because, uh, uh, just, yeah, give us a second. No problem. It's just like <laughs> my I, Facebook oh, I... posts and stuff like that. <laughs> it's just like your Facebook posts. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show them to you. And then, um, once I show them to you, I just want you to give me like a little bit of background behind the scenes knowledge of each post where were you what did you do the story behind the post basically depends on um, the post but no problem <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna hope you remember all of this them some funky stuff um, there. like it's from like 13 years ago okay let's see <laughs> that's the that's the fun part because some of them I you agree, might remember some of them you might not eh uh but for all of those listening head on over to the stella sound podcast youtube page or join the discord community to have a look with us okay i think i've got it 
Let's see. Okay, let me just zoom in a bit because it's a bit. All tight. right. So this this one, I just want to know. Literally, let me just read this. Literally listening to thoughts by a person that uses his anus like an instrument. Some projects are just different. Your face says a lot, I... and I want to know. Is this a real person using his anus? I just don't know if I can use his farting? name. I don't know if he will like it, but it's funny. I, I will just say this about this person. He literally yeah. turns gas, in, gas into money. He's making money out of his yeah. parts. Like, he's farting for me. I gave him this microphone, and he farted Yo. into my microphone. I know it sounds disgusting, but it's a work. Sound design, and he farted, and he has... I know I know him like yeah. with children, like since we're young, and he has the most magical, oh. interesting, musical texturing, like the texturing, interesting parts. It was just amazing to listen to, and so it was a company. <laughs> never they yeah. selling sound effects to their like you know platform, and one like they did like a farting <laughs> package. So I just had yeah. to fart every morning. You have the best parts in the morning. He just farted every morning and recorded them and sent the whole thing to me. And I listened to it <laughs> on my way to Würzburg, Würzburg. And uh, Würzburg. Yeah, and I just listened and this to is what you... <laughs> And it was hilarious. I mean... It was hilarious. I laughed. That... <laughs> <laughs> the adventures of sound engineering. I I... But question, right? Did you take the mic back? And if so, how did you clean the mic? He did not put like, no. on the mic. I just, you know, it's still, it just, yeah, I know it's disgusting. Still... I know it's disgusting. You didn't, you don't clean it. It's a microphone. It's just like I trust him to yeah. like, no actual physical touch between my mic and your anus. Yeah. Just like you know, you need some like air. You need Thanks. some like width, like, uh, like a proper recording. Pretty... Like have like a thirty centimeter from the mic and just like do your magic. Yeah. And he did some magical stuff. Yeah. It was sold, by the way. There's videos on YouTube by that company. It's called Playstream.gg, which you can see players listen to parts and laugh. I am immediately <laughs> opening a tab, and I'm going to watch this later. Let me quickly just open this tab. That is in my Play Store. Okay, great. I got it. Um, I saw this post, and I was like, nah, it's just, you know, it's just a post, you know, just a post. But it's a real guy farting, but great. Thought, it's real you, parts you know, in my some... ear there, in my headphones. Yes, yeah, some projects are different, you know. <laughs> some projects um, are This is with this the Roman. band Saf Safek, yeah. yeah. This is the this is the, the, the laugh guy the what we talked yeah, about earlier. Yeah, the laughing guy. Yeah, that's him. Uh, but you guys just look like you're so in tune. This was during a, a performance, I think. Yeah, this is in yes. the Yellow Submarine in Jerusalem. It's a really cool big oh. club. It's when I came back from Europe. I love this photo, by the way, because it looks like Sub-Zero versus Scorpion from Mortal Kombat, if you look at it. <laughs> yeah, a little, eh? With the, with the coloring, yeah. The I, can see, I can see that, yeah. Uh, um, I just came back from Europe, and they had a concert. And I was not a bass player anymore, but I just got up to play the bass for one join. song, which is called Slap. I think it's a temporary name, yeah. but for a bass player, a song that's called Slap, gotta be good and it's it, and it was you gotta do it and it was like you know this portion you just do. like bam, bam, and like drop d it was just like fun we used to do that this pose is a lot such a good photo. <laughs> weird pose but it's such a it's a it's such a good photo because you guys just look like i don't remember the name of the photographer but great job like amazing job oh yeah this is a you posted several photos of this concert um and the other photos are just as good they're like really I don't know really. I don't know whether that a uh, photography is, but Orange should know. He like to... he picks them, picks them really good. Who's gonna be the photographer? He should know. If... <laughs> Sorry, uh, most people they study music. They might study engineering, and then uh, for those that do study music, there is the option to always go into sound engineering. But I know from where I come from, it's not something that's very well known or easy to get in it's just a accidental job that you land into you know a bit about music you've done recording and before you know it you're a sound engineer there's no real i want to say uh career path or even um university path or anything like that to follow sound engineering so i want you to give us a little bit of advice for all the beginners out there or all beginner musicians that might want to do this one day, how do you get into sound engineering and sound design? 
So, <laughs> first of all, again, I'll do the separation between engineering and designing. Or yeah. if it's talk, if we're talking about musicians or doing music for films or gaming or stuff like that. They uh, do all of them. I mean, that's a good because you've you've the engineering. On all I'll of them. put aside again. I refer to it as like being an engineer in a studio. I plug, I unplug, I mix. I, it's like you have to study <laughs> sound. Like, yeah. It's good that you learn music. You have to understand sound and signal flow and the different effects and inputs and sends and inserts and blah, 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 blah. You have to know all those stuff. Uh, yeah. When it's coming to be a musician for films or for gaming or being a sound designer for films or for gaming, uh, you just have to understand, first of all, it's a long run. Like it's, You're going to mm. run for a long time looking for your clients, looking for people who want you to compose for their film or for their game. And pay you for that. Luckily, yeah. there's a really like, you know, ba like basic steps you can take or basic stuff you can do to start growing in this industry. Uh, first of all, it's really easy to build a portfolio. Like you could just have to pick a scene you really like that you really love, mute it all and just compose something or sound design something. And you're just starting building a portfolio. And then when someone just sees your job or looking for, for a composer on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or whatnot, you can just send it over. So it's really yeah. easy to show like a variety of stuff you compose. It's really easy to show your skill. Second of all, uh, it's really trust based. Like people, as far as I understand, like to work with people that they trust. They don't want you to be like a Grammy nominee or like awards winner, like composer. They, don't need, they want to work with someone they can trust who he's a good like composer or sound designer. But second of all, he's like, like a liable person. Like he works on time. He understand your needs. He know how to work on the budget. He know how to keep these deadlines. Like all of those stuff are really, really important in those worlds. So okay. if you manage to create the right impression for people, like showing like, Hey, I'm easy going. I'm also responsible. I'm also know how to manage myself. Here's the way I work. Here's my quotation. Here's I'm going to approach this specific project. If you make it all clear and like all the questions and all the problems the director or the game designer had beforehand, if you answer all of those problems and questions, then he's probably going to trust you. And again, it doesn't matter if you had a lot of experience before that. If you show them like, you know, this basic portfolio, you can put your foot at the door. Now, of course, those yeah. are just like, you know, first steps. You're not necessarily going to get paid very well. You're not necessarily going to get paid at all. Sometimes, you know, it's just a cool project. No money in that, but a lot of experience, which is experience. also cool and good. Yeah. Second of all, when it comes to gaming, or third of all, sorry, there's stuff called game jams, which is, like, it's just yeah. like a brilliant idea. It's like we have jams in music, but it's not the same thing. It's just like, you know, yeah. like game developers, programmers, programmers, game designers, musicians, artists, just like, you know, go to a certain place or just join a specific game jam and they have like three days to like to build a game. And just sometimes it's a crew you come beforehand, sometimes you just meet the people, sometimes sometimes just say, hey, I'm a composer. Uh, if anyone needs a composer in their team, I'm in. And you just start I'm working <laughs> with people and like the specific game jam gives you like a topic or a theme and you just have to make a game. And no one expects to make the next big AAA game Everyone comes to yeah, make mistakes, yeah, yeah. to have fun, to explore, to get to know each other. And a lot of times it gets you the experience you need to work in the industry and it gets you familiar with people. Later, mm. one month, one year, two years might work somewhere and might need your skills because they had fun working with you, because they had fun getting to know you. They really liked what you did. So all of those different elements of like creating a portfolio, mingle on projects and with projects with people or just looking out there for people in the groups, looking for like, you know, people to hire like composers, okay. all ways to go in this industry. That's, um, that's amazing. Uh, especially with the, uh, the game jams, I did not know I thought game jams and let's say normal musical jams were the same <laughs> exact thing. <laughs> it's not... So I was one of those people. <laughs> it's so different. I, I want to, um, pull apart your brain a bit with game music especially because it's what i like about let's say 2021 or the time the era that we're living in right mm -hmm. now is that gaming music is becoming so popular that it's actually quite rivaling uh, or it's giving a good competition to movie music like we do obviously have our favorite movie soundtracks etc etc but a lot of 
uh, uh, game soundtracks are becoming more and more popular just as popular as movie soundtracks if you will like i'm i immediately think of the witcher games or skyrim um, the elder scrolls which doom. Uh, i mean there's so doom doom, doom. <laughs> i mean doom yeah <laughs> especially <laughs> but then if you think about let's say any uh rpg game uh i'm gonna choose fallout any of the fallouts doesn't matter which one um you have your soundtrack but it's not like a movie where there is a beginning emotion i'm gonna call it emotion beginning emotion that climbs to a certain emotion and then dies back down or whatever there's nothing to portray it's more of a you get the feel for the game and it's almost as if that entire theme is on a loop entirely in the background of your game does this create a challenge when writing for gaming yeah. music or is it very similar to scoring movie music you know, you're just touching the difference between music and gaming and i think that's what makes gaming music so exciting like you have yeah two factors like not in all games but most games are interesting games that's like that music wise it has to be adaptive yeah. like if the okay. boss came in if uh, the player should know he's safe right now, or if like tension is rising up, that he, did he lose health? Or are we like, you know, in a hyper mode right now, like Super Mario taking his watch and like, yeah. dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it has to be adaptive <laughs> and musical. Like it has to work music wise and have to be adaptive. Yeah. Second of all, you never know what the player is gonna do and when he's gonna do it. So sometimes the player, like if it's me playing the Witcher, I'm pl- probably gonna get stuck somewhere for hours, just frustrated not knowing what to do and i'm just like this is why by the way i didn't play the witcher yeah. i just felt dumb <laughs> it's like okay i've had it <laughs> don't get it yeah i just felt i felt so, very similar to you right now I'm like yep yeah, the frustration with the witcher but yeah. it's, it's 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 like as you said like what do you why do you write the music because so, you know you're very calm and the boss walks in or whatever how do you so the, like, write so that you know can yeah there's two approaches really like you know common approaches for composing for uh, gaming it's like the horizontal What's the other word? I just have a black shot. Sequential and horizontal. Uh, horizontal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Horizontal, vertical. Vertical and horizontal. Thank you. Yeah. So, like, first of all, horizontal means part A of the mu- music can go to part B, but it cannot go to part C. But part C can go to part B and part D. Part D is the only part and go back to part A. Like, you have to build a system for your music that works adapt- adapt- adaptively to the game. Like you just have to set the music yes, and yes. create the logic and the rules for it. Now it has to stay musical. All of the parts have to be musical with each other. Like yeah, maybe yeah. part B has like these heavy guitars and like dramatic trombones and cellos or whatnot. But part A has a lute because it's just simple and nice. Part C has the whole thing, but yeah. on a different scale, not a far scale, just like, I don't know, one sharp difference, you know, like just one a bit. This is on a lydian, yeah. this is on a major scale, just a small difference depending on the game vibe. This is like the horizontal. That's very interesting. Vertical means you have to keep the game interesting if part A is just playing endlessly because Ding is playing The Witcher, for example. So you just create the same theme, but you don't write one lute, one bass, one uh, drum and one trumpet. You create three parts for the lute, three parts for the bass, three parts for the trumpet, but only one part is gonna play. But you just tell the computer or your Mm. software, play it randomly. Pick whatever part of the lute and the trumpet and the bass and the drum that you want and just play them. And out of like, let's say nine or 12 stems that you exported, there can be like, you know, just tons of variations you can get. So if the player gets stuck okay. somewhere, he's gonna hear the same part, but in so many different variations that just worked perfectly together. So it's just- And it doesn't become boring, yeah. And it just, but it keeps it interesting eventually because it always sounds like the music develops. So it's like, as a composer, yeah, it's just fun because you get to does. randomize your themes and just hear different combinations of them in real time. It's like, it's quite interesting and fun. It's the, it's the, uh, it's a variation, the theme and variations, but on a very, very, very large scale. Yeah, basically. Um, because, um, I love going <laughs> on to Reddit, but uh, Reddit is a very interesting place where you can either find friends or just a lot of enemies. But at the moment, or especially I should say after the, the worldwide Corona lockdown, um, there's been a very big debate on Reddit when it comes to recording. And that uh, I want to, I'm going to be daring and brave and say that concerns recording for 
music, uh, music writing, sound design, engineering, everything, everything to do with music recording at home. Um, a lot of people started creating very basic at home uh recording setups uh especially like we saw yours as well with the instagram photos and then uh idea or a a, a opinion that started showing up on red on the reddit forums was why do we need big studio setups if i can basically just do this at home i mean got my mics got the right door i got the uh you know good MIDI keyboards, good plugins. Why do I need to go and hire a sound engineer, hire a studio to do this if I can just do it myself? So you've done both, obviously. So I want to know, I want to, I want to challenge you and ask you a bit, what are the benefits of an at-home small studio compared to a lot? What are the benefits of each basically? Um, at-home small studio and a large mm -hmm. studio setup. First of all, I would say, because I know people love, just people just love to argue. Yeah. Like, what are you arguing about? Each to his own, you know? <laughs> if it sounds good, it sounds good. If it's Abbey Road yep. or just like a shitty basement, if it sounds good, it sounds, it sounds good. good. No, one, no one cares. No one cares. <laughs> yeah. And eventually everyone's going to hear it from their shitty phone microphone, yep. you know? It's not like people have like those monitors and like a really good sub. They can hear the 30 yep. hertz playing. No, people are going to hear it from their like phone. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> if it sounds good, it sounds good. First of all, no reason to argue about it. Every like way is liable. That being said, I remember I walked like in a studios, really cool studios. We recorded mainly like, you know, orchestras and like uh, classical music in Israel. Uh, and I remember one session, like this young fellow just came with his bass. He wanted to record his song, like really naive and innocent like, looking. And he's like, I want to record my bass today. And like, I was a technician that day to record yeah. him. And like I'm plugging his bass to the amp and I can putting my mics and like I'm taking a DI just to have like, you know, just straight into my computer, have like, you know, the dry single and the, like the amplifier, yeah. like amplified single from the amplifier. And deep down, I'm like, you are wasting money right now. Yeah. I'm sorry. You are wasting your money. You don't have to pay 150 shekels per hour for recording this In because you can do that at home. Mm. First of all. You're not Led Zeppelin or Tool. Or <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. You, you don't have the money to afford that and you don't need to afford that because you don't have millions of fans waiting for your song. It's fine just to do it at home. And you have amazing plugins that you can just like use. And like the digital technology today is just amazing. amazing yeah. You can do amazing stuff with that. Uh, so I think what home studios and the technology that like people can just like, you know, buy and purchase some software, or some VST or a plugin to use really like eventually takes up the overall level because people can sound really good on the budget. I think mostly people who record in studios are pissed about it <laughs> because it's like, come on guys, you have to do it. Yeah. Like, you know, you can't just do it at home and get the same. And like, yeah, you can. An amazing example for that. I do compose classical music sometimes or classical themes. And I just use Spitfire and East West, which is like, you know, companies who produce Classical instruments via these just like samples yeah. and they sound amazing, they sound great. amazing. And the average person won't know the difference. Of course, it's not a brilliant orchestra. Of course, you need a conductor to make it perfect, but I'm not Hans Zimmer. I don't have the money or the need for this kind of facility because I can sound really great. We're past the guitar pro MIDI area. It's not sound shitty. It sounds amazing. It sounds good. Of course. Yeah. Sounds real good. And of course, if you're recording a guitar, you have like, you know, all those like VSTs of like different amps and just plug in. You can choose your sound. You don't have like to be worried because like, oh, I already lost three hours. Like I have to pay for this three hours. I haven't even started recording yet. Oh, I don't know what. You don't have to worry about it. You can do it at home quietly, peacefully, and you can have a really good result. You have to understand the space you work in. Like what's yes. your acoustics? You have to block any reverberation. If you're recording with a mic, you have to stop any kind of noise from the outside or reverberation, for example. Uh, you have to understand your, uh, like your speakers, your monitors. You have to know how they work, how they sound, what's the benefits, and you know how to like adjust your sound for it and how like make it sound coherent or as coherent as possible on someone's headphones, in his car, in his phone, in your computer, and like with your speakers. With that being said, you cannot record drums properly at your basement. You can get the basement feel if you're looking for that. But if you want a live drummer who does the whole thing that the drummer can do, 
you need a proper place that sounds good, that like it's actually treated acoustically. Like, yeah. so the drums could like be captured and recorded properly. You have to mic them properly to make them sound good. It doesn't matter if later on you're going to put like triggers on it. Fine. Fair enough. It will sound amazing. But if you want the whole drummer vibe, for example, an instrument like a drum has to be in a studio or at least a treated place. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I was thinking that when you were saying that like most, most things you can record at home, um, especially with plugins, et cetera, et cetera. But there are certain instruments that just sound better when it's in a larger studio recording. I was thinking, I was thinking timpani drums. You can never get a good timpani sure. drum plug in anywhere. Um, and what was it? Uh, it was some flutes. Flutes always oh, sound shitty. They sound <laughs> sound like they sound fake. <laughs> There's no other word for it. They sound. Haven't fake. found a good flute sample. I have to say. I, I just want people to tell me. Oh, you have to hear this. <laughs> this is it's amazing. It's like, oh. Yeah. No. But no, but like, honestly, there's like tons of YouTube videos of people just recreating Tchaikovsky pieces only with VSTs, only oh, with yes. Spitfire VSTs, only with East West. And I dare you to notice the difference. There's, you won't know the yeah. difference. There's a very popular YouTuber that does um, basically, they, they, they take um, pop songs, very famous pop songs, and then they put it into orchestra form, the orchestra to sound like epic soundtracks, basically. And they do not use one single real instrument that is all plugins and MIDI sounds. And it sounds great. There's nothing wrong with it. It takes like a real it's... fine ear to ear that it's not a real instrument. I, I don't think people realize all the time it was uh, beginners. Let's say people that are starting out should also realize that you can do most of the stuff at home. It's yeah. time in the podcast where I've got to tell you to behold the meteor shower and you're going to give me like a really strange look behold the meteor shower this section is to keep you on your toes and give you and I'm going to ask you rapid fire questions to which you have to give spontaneous answers so can I just give you quick questions you say whatever's on your mind they're pretty easy the list isn't very long but I want to see I hope I'll succeed. Okay. I hope I, 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 it's not too controversial. Are you ready for the meteor shower, Dean? I am ready. Okay, here we go. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> if you could be an instrument, which one would you be? Ooh. Didgeridoo. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. That's the first time we've yeah, heard that. Really it feels fun, I guess. Oh, yeah. That's a really <laughs> fun. I love that instrument. It's, it's so <laughs> silly. Uh, SpongeBob or Patrick Nickelodeon fan? Uh, I want to say Patrick, but SpongeBob is amazing. I'll say Patrick. Oh, I love Patrick. He's so silly. He's I so love, cool. I love the doofuses. I yeah, know. he's so dumb. <laughs> agree or disagree? Pineapples belong on pizza. I agree. Oh, okay. For a long time, for a long time, I disagreed until last weekend. What happened? I tried. Wait, side. I tried. We're going to put this media show on a hold. What happened last weekend? <laughs> there was a game jam. Oh. And you, you order pizzas and someone was like, pineapple on my pizza. And I'm like, let's do it. <laughs> Just do it. And I, this is my, this is my uh, lesson from it. You can eat four slices of pineapple on pizza. One slice. It's good. It's good. There's a whole cute, section yeah. of the internet, a whole corner of the internet that's going to just fight you on it. But I agree with you. Just saying I'm Italian. I'm Italian. <laughs> There's some... I am Italian citizenship. I have Italian passport. So I like, know what I'm talking about. I'm yeah. talking about <laughs> you have the certified pizza knowledge right there. I do. Okay. <laughs> uh, which movie? So Ooh, let, I'm going to try that again. Which movie has the best soundtrack? I don't know, but I will say the last one that really kept an impression on me. It's uh, You Were Never Really Here. Ooh. Uh, don't know it. Joaquin Phoenix. Don't know Not it. such a famous movie, but Johnny Greenwood from Radiohead composed the whole uh, music. Okay, there and I am. It's kind of a creepy vibe. Great soundtrack. Don't listen to mm. it without the movie. It's creepy. <laughs> Greenwood With is the a, movie, it's perfect. Greenwood has done one or two projects, but he's surprisingly good for just a commercial artist. He's a he's a great composer as well. He's uh, an amazing composer. Amazing. And he always amazing. does the he does the creepy stuff as well. Okay, which Friends <laughs> character are you? I don't know. I didn't watch Friends so much. <laughs> <laughs> I admit it. What? I didn't watch Friends so much. Okay, I think but <laughs> I don't want to be Ross. No, don't be Ross. Don't never. I don't want to be Ross. I don't know who I'm. I think Phoebe is fun to be. 
Uh, there's the the doofus one, the male Phoebe. Oh, Joey, 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 Joey. I want to be Joey, because I'm joking around. I'm not just a mm. hunk, but just joking around. I think... It could be fun. I've known you for... How many? How long is this interview? I've known you for like an hour and a tiny bit, right? I think you might be like a combination of Chandler and Phoebe, surprisingly, which is a weird combination, but Ch- it's Chandler, I'll Phoebe, take it. hybrid character. I'll take it. So, great. <laughs> Favorite <laughs> plugin of all time? Favorite plugin of all time. Yeah. That's a tough one. <laughs> You're like, damn it. <laughs> I will just, again, it's, it's boring. Fab filter EQ is just my go to. Every good. time. It's a good one. It's, it's not the most arti- artistic and exciting, but the Pro Q3 is a good just. One. It's a, reli- it's a it's you a know what no one. i changed my answer i will say they're like saturator saturn okay. two. Oh yeah yeah okay 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 i'm with you I'm freaking with perfect you. um concerning game music themes which is better mario brothers or angry birds mario brothers oh yes i agree okay i agree good <laughs> good yes thank you very much who would win in an epic battle a mcdonald's stuffed trump or an angry Pope Francis? I will repeat the question: Who would Shit. win in an e- <laughs> who would who would win in an epic battle? A McDonald's the stuffed Trump, or an angry Pope Francis? So, Trump after he's had a big McDonald's feast, or Pope Francis with nothing to lose? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> I want to compose that battle, you know. <laughs> it. I, I would say be... Trump. It's Trump. I think just he goes all the way. Yeah, he, he's playing dirty. Dirty. Playing that's dirty. He, yeah. He's a dirty player. And here's the one that gets everyone every single time. And you're only allowed to choose one. So think carefully. Best song of all time. I can't. No, no. I have <laughs> to. You have to. I want it's again. Con- I don't know if take like the objective. I know it's supposed to be intuitive and like first thing to pop to your mind. <laughs> Pillow of wind or shine on your crazy diamond. It's I a know tough you, question. It's an impossible question. How I did, th- I, it's, it's just. I, just by I, I don't know. Uh, again, a pillow of wind. By... I will say pillow of wind. I still listen to it from like I'm 15 or 16. Yeah. Every time I listen to it, it's just perfect. It's a tough Not one. Not their best song, but I just listen it's, to it a lot. I also have like a, I want to say a, a, a top five, which usually turns into a top 10, which usually turns into a top 20, but then someone it's asked impossible. me this one. How, how can I let go King Crimson or Tool? Like, it's impossible. There's so many. And then you're like, okay, but what about this one? What about that one? And so you, can, you can never, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, but okay. You answered the question. You were strong. I'm proud of you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. But Dean, I want to say thank you for co-piloting this rocket ship today. And before we check our engines, I want to give you a chance to shout out any platforms or projects before we go. Remember to follow us on the Stellar Sound Discord community or head on over to Instagram for the latest Stellar updates. But Dean, the floor is yours. Any projects or places you want to shout Uh, out? So first of all, Safek, if you like rock or alternative (laughs) rock or metal, I think you'll find good music there. It has really deep meaning lyric wise and music yeah. wise. So it's Safek, it's S A double F E K. Second of all, it's a cool project we're working on right now. I feel like I'm advertising myself. It's weird for me. <laughs> this, is, this is the moment this is, I know, this but it's is like the a moment, it's man. Weird this is the moment for yeah. me. <laughs> um, so it's a project called Heart and Brain by Nick Silik. If It's a really famous comic. Uh, I might share the screen if this is possible. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah? Uno momento. Do it. We are unable to. Okay, wait. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, do you see my screen? Uh, it's loading. It's loading. How to the rain, the video yes, game. Yes. So we're on Kickstarter right now. It's a really cool video game. Really nice. We're having a Kickstarter. And I know a lot of people know this awesome. comic. Awesome. Uh, and if you like it, there's going to be like a game coming soon for mobile, for PC. Uh, yeah, you can just follow. Oh, ooh, I stopped sharing. Or just like, and <laughs> just go. follow the game or like, you know, like support it if you want to Kickstarter. 
It's going to be amazing for all of us. It's a really good, cute video game. The other stuff I want to promote, if you like prog rock, Hanagaria, which means the carpentry, by the way. Long story there, but never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Long oh. story. <laughs> uh... <laughs> good to know. Good Hanagaria, to know. <laughs> H-A, just like how it sounds like Hanagaria. Uh, Spotify, YouTube, the whole yeah. basic platforms. Uh, prog rock for prog lovers. Uh, be gentle on us sound-wise. <laughs> Not the best mixing. Good music. No. Uh, yeah. Good music. Good music. And... Yeah, good music, man. I, I don't know. That. Your website and Instagram, man. Got it. I'm gonna promote it for uh, you. Uh, yeah, and uh, contact me if Everyone you need to sound as honorary composer. Yeah. Of course. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm gonna have to become your manager, man, Dean. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Anyone watching, he's got all his details and everything, all his projects there if you want to go reference it and just go have a listen and maybe you want to hire him for a project. I will say, to... there's free yeah. SFX I made for Artlist <laughs> and like there's like a selection of SFX. So if you're, if you're a director or a game designer yes. and you need SFX, you can go there and pick your SFX or recordings and just use it for free, of course. Definitely check it out. But listeners and fellow astronauts out there, from me, Leon Repulsen, and my guest, Dean, we want to thank you for joining us here at the Stellar Science Podcast. 